Here, with the performance of his original work at an America's Hometown Laureates open mic event, is poet Alan Howarth. Thank you so much for having me. This is a beautiful place. I have three pieces I want to read for you today. I can get myself organized here. All right. Hmm. Okay. It's in my pocket. Before I had any children, I thought I would try to write something for them, almost like a poet telling like, when you get older, these are things you should do. This is what you should worry about or whatever. And so this, this is what came out. This is called A Legacy. Taste a fresh egg that came from inside a chicken that you knew personally. Feel wet spring grass between your toes, touch knowing skin, know you are part of a past and part of a future. Laugh until the ache drains out your fingers and toes, cry over a beautiful song. Feel sperm and egg unite through love, believe that rational scientific knowledge does change our world for the better, sometimes. Be honest, even when it be unpleasant. But don't be honest to be unpleasant. <laughs> no fear, creep up your stomach and let it out when you feel that life will have been worth death. Never be far from gravity, tides, stars, systems of growth, Enjoy the first bite of honest food. Remember the first sip of wine. Be a family. Walk toward conflict and come out winners. Know beauty as you find it. Seek sources. Become a source. Feel the sun on eyelids closed till the yellow needles weave a net of heat through to the back of your neck. Participate in a building built through participation. In more than technique, no technique for what it is, a tool, not an icon. Spend a moon alone on earth beyond man's reach. Live, build, so earth may live. Okay, then the second one I have here, um, this is dedicated to two old friends of mine, um, Michael James Callahan and Sandy Bosley. And these two friends of mine were, you could say, casualties of the Vietnam War. And uh, this poem is for them that I wrote. It's called... Standing. When I first wrote it, um, I want to say that Peter, Paul, and Mary had a song at the time called Where Have All the Flowers Gone? And so originally when I wrote it, and there's a line that I'll read, and you'll hear it, it's called Octo that, that says October Flowers. And so originally I was going to call it that. But then later on I thought, you know, it's like standing for what you believe in. That's the important part. And so that's what this poem is really about. So, standing for fear my footsteps would falter, I am here on the riverbank, hearing you asking me to put on my armor and wear your colors. You ask, not that I go to battle on the fields of Spain or in the dark forests, but the alleys of despair and the streets of loneliness. You offer your love as my shield, that same love you will use to nurse my wounds, to fight the illnesses 
that plague my heart. Lady, I shall carry your banner, a white dove on a scarlet field. Donna Novius Pacem inscribed in the strongest black. And lady, I shall carry your love of this river, of the lonely gull, of these dying October flowers. And lady, my pledge to thee, sworn on the stars, I lay my pen at your feet, for I own no sword. And finally, one last one, and uh, this, this, and the, the exciting thing about about this one and the first one that I read is that I've never read these in public before, so it's always interesting to try something out. How is this going to sound? Is I going to do something? So this one is is probably one of the most personal song, uh, poems I ever wrote, and it's uh, for one of my sons, who uh, unfortunately passed away. He, uh, he was in the Navy, and he uh, was injured, and they gave him uh, OxyContin. And the only thing was that he came back from being overseas and stuff, and he was addicted to OxyContin. He couldn't get enough of that stuff. And in the end, he, he died of a massive heart attack. He was only in his early 40s, he, way too young. But it all kind of stems from that. So anyway, this poem is about him. It's called... A uh, lullaby for Matthew David. Fresh grief undoes me like a wave washing over me from a distant shore. And for the moment, I want to drown in it. Matt, you come to me in a whisper that everything will be all right, that peace will come at last. You ask me to go quietly soaring because the earthbound life is finally too small. And it's like the metaphor of a swing. You shut your eyes tight and it can take you anywhere. And in that dream, I see a young boy's eyes filled with wonder at seeing a netted frog or a face plunging <clears throat> into a birthday ice cream cake. But there are no more birthdays to celebrate on this day in August. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But wait. I choose to celebrate you, Matt, in your tragic, shortened life. You are my master, sommelier in training. All the times we shared in a good glass of wine... Liquid poetry. Today, I choose not to wallow in the thick cloud of sadness, but to celebrate all that was good about your life. So I will run to the vineyards and wineries of our world. And as a warm rain washes me clean, I will raise a glass or two to you, knowing that as you break bread with the angels, that you are telling them what the best wine they should be drinking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button before you go. We'll see you next time.